We thank God for a Sabbath day. At Baraton, a Sabbath is a high day for us. For some of us who work throughout the week, we look forward for this day so that we can rest. I have chosen to speak on a topic, peace with God. Peace with God. The passage that I would like us to meditate upon was read to us by our sister, and that is where we will concentrate our sharing this evening. When I was a pastor, I am still a pastor, but those days I was active in a church district. I one time visited a very old man who was sick in a hospital. I was going to visit and pray with him. I found him on his sick bed. The body was wasting away and the disease had taken toll on his life. But I looked at his eyes and his eyes were radiating with joy. He looked at me and said these words that I still remember up to today. Pastor, I have made peace with God. I am ready to rest anytime. Probably the question that I need to ask us this evening is, have you made peace with God? Again, one time we were discussing with a group of some people and one person amongst us just said, the most important thing for me now in life is to make peace with God. As we enter into another week, another future, I am requesting us to consider this question I'm posing this evening. Have you made peace with God? With God? The passage that I would like us to consider is in the book of Romans. Let me read it again. Our sister read it very well, but I will want to read it slowly from Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 5. Okay, church, let us read together that passage. It says, I'm reading from NIV. You can follow in your various versions. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And then verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given us. And the church says what? Amen. Amen. Peace with God. This is one of the great themes in the book of Romans. I'll tell you that uh, Paul was a great thinker and a great writer. If you are keen following the passage which I read, it began with therefore, which means Paul has been arguing and is now making a conclusion. He has argued from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and now in chapter 5, he lays down his case. This is why I was giving these several arguments. 
therefore. Because of what I have said, therefore, have, we have peace with God. There are three such statements in the book of Romans. There could be many, but I want just to cite these three to put our passage into context. There's another one in chapter 8. After he has argued from chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, when he reaches chapter 8, he says in verse 1, Therefore, there is no condemnation. He then argues from chapter 9, 10, 11, and then in chapter 12, he again says, Therefore, what I am trying to impress upon us is that the passage we are thinking of this evening is one of the weighty arguments of Paul in the book of Romans. These statements, three of them that I've, made, I've said, are made after lengthy and profound theological arguments, implying that they are profound they are bottom lines of his argument in the book. I pick one of them where he says, Therefore, we have peace with God. Fellow believers, if there is anything that you should seek so much in life is to have peace with God. The letter to the Romans is said to be one of the epistles that Paul wrote just to express what the good news is. He was not writing because there was a problem in Rome. He just sat down and said, I will write a good exposition of this thing that I have been preaching. Gospel. What is it? And if I can follow the argument of this great man, I think one of the points that he's trying to tell us this evening about the gospel is that gospel is all about having peace with God. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. What a powerful passage. But let me draw your attention to something here that I also observed when I was reading this passage. Uh, those who are projecting, you can also project verse 1 and verse 2 of chapter 5. And let's look at this passage together. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. I read the two verses that we have read and I conclude that Paul is saying that we have peace with God because our past has been handled. And also, our future has been secured. Now, if you heard me, the two verses impresses me with this thought. We have peace with God because our past has been handled and our future has been secured. Yes. Our past. Let me talk about that briefly. That has been the burden of Paul from verse 1 through from chapter 1 through chapter 5 to, through chapter 4. Go read the book of Romans. 
In chapter 1, Paul brings a survey of this world. And he says that the Gentiles, though they had nature with them, though they had everything that could make them know God, rejected this and worshipped idols. He concludes and says, the Gentiles are sinners. He then goes to his people in chapter 2, where he talks about the Jews. He says the Jews too, though they had the law, they did not follow the law. Therefore, the Jews also are sinners. He concludes in the verse that we all know in chapter 3, and says, therefore, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Sin is what defines each and every one of us in this hall. They are only literate sinners and illiterate sinners. They are only male sinners and female sinners. They are educated sinners and educated sinners. They are rich sinners, poor sinners. Sin is the denominator. So what am I saying? The problem with our past is sin. We thank God because he has handled that. I agree with the great man. I think it is Simpson. Simpson, the one who invented chloroform. We, we can check it out. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but you are in sciences. You know that more than me. He was once interviewed and was asked, Simpson, what is your greatest discovery? The man replied, I will tell you my greatest discovery that I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. That is the greatest discovery you can make. We are sinners. But we thank God because when sin struck this planet earth in Genesis chapter 3 God summoned his divine counsel to handle sin and a decision was made in that divine counsel that Jesus would come and die for sinners and Jesus came and died for sinners so sin is the problem. It is sin that has created enmity with God. And this is the past that we have in our lives. Now let me speak to us. Open up your lives in your eyes. Is your closet clean? I think no. Each of us seated here and standing here this evening, there are things in our life we wish no one knew. We have a past that shocks us. We thank God that he has given us a remedy to that past. Through Jesus Christ, he has made it possible for us who are enemies with God to be again at peace with God. Paul uses a language I want to highlight from the passage. Therefore, since we have been justified, a big term, but with a simple meaning, I would like you to understand this term justified. To simply mean we have been put in a right relationship with God. 
I'll repeat. Since we have been justified, substitute that by saying, since we have been put in a right relationship with God. Therefore, the only thing that makes us not to be in the right relationship with God is sin. Is there sin in your life? The good news is Jesus has given us room that we can use so that the sin that is in our lives can be handled. It is by handling our past, each and every one of us has a past, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I would just like to take you back a little bit and point to you what happens when God does that. In chapter 4, verse 7, chapter 4, verse 7, those who are projecting can project. I want to pronounce a blessing to what I have been talking about as sin. God has provided a remedy for sin. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one who sinned the Lord never count against them. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Do you know where these words come from? These words come from David. When he had sinned, murdered, and committed adultery, and then God came to him as he comes to us every time and pointed out to David through prophet Nathan. Nathan lifted up his fingers and pointed at David, you are the man. David didn't argue. He just said, I have sinned. And out of his mouth came these words because he realized the blessing that is there when you are forgiven. There's something that God has given us and we play around with it. As a servant of God, let me remind us all this evening. God has given us this facility known as forgiveness. It is still wide open for us but it won't be open forever. It is the only thing that he gives instantly. You may come to God. Hey God, I want a boyfriend. Eh? God may say no. Or wait. God, I want money. It may even take a year or two or three or five or six or ten without providing and ultimately may provide it at his best time. But let me tell you, church, when you come to God and ask him, Father, forgive me instantly, you will be forgiven. What does the church say? Please let us make use of this facility that God has generously provided. There's one adjective I like about our God. And that adjective is, God is rich in mercies. Rich in mercies. David used it. And his past was dealt with. The Bible records the latter life of David, a man after God's heart. Because his past had been dealt with. I would like to ask have you given God your past to handle? Our God is gracious. He does not only take care of our past but secures our future. That's why we read in that passage, let me just recap again. He says in verse 2, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. I read slowly for emphasis. 
Our past has been taken care of. But God has ushered us into a new territory. A territory of grace. I wish I had time. But let me just flip over to another book of Paul to explain what is happening here. This past and this present. Turn with me now to the book of Ephesians. Can we go to the book of Ephesians to explain this beautiful point? I would like us to read Ephesians 2. Let's read Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'll read slowly verse 1 to 5. Ah, praise the Lord, church. I am reading, I'm sharing with us how God has handled our past and how he has secured our future. Now listen to this passage. I want to read it. It explains what I'm trying to say here. As for you, you are dead. If you are an English student or you understand English, that is past tense. You are dead in your transgressions and sins. In which you used past tense to live. When you followed past tense, the ways of the world and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, a uh, spirit who is at work in those who are disobedient. Past tense. All of us also lived past tense. Among them at one time, gratifying cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. Up to there, if you are a student of the Bible, I would like to describe what I have read so far as being objects of wrath. Our past, we were objects of God's wrath. But that's not the end of that passage. If you continue reading in verse 4, it begins with but. A change to what has occurred. A change to what has been experienced. Let me read verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by his grace you have been saved. What does the church say? I want you to understand this passage. From verse 1 to verse 3, and including uh, the whole of verse 3, it is describing our past. But from verse 4 onwards, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ. I would like to divide this passage I've read in this manner. In the past, we were objects of God's wrath. But now, because of Jesus Christ, we are objects of God's love. What does the church say? I just don't know whether you understand what it means to be an object of love. Some of us here are loved. My wife loves me. She waits for me to go home and very anxious if I don't turn up in time. And I'm an object of her love. She's also an object of my love. Those who are lovers here understand what it means to be an object of someone's love. I'm speaking in human terms. But God regarding us as objects of his love is something else. Yes, our past has been handled. Now, we are objects of God's love. Uh, I don't have time. Let us just go to chapter 5 and now I'll share with you how our future has been secured. I want to read verse 1. Chapter 5. Let me read from verse 3 onwards. It says, Now, not verse 3, not only so, 
but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Our future, we have hope. Our future, we have perseverance, even though there are many things that are happening. And we'd like to visit, finish with verse 5, which says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Our future is secure, because we have been provided with hope. We have been provided with perseverance. We have been provided with love. And this whole come as a package in our lives because God gives us his Holy Spirit. What does the church say? There's a quotation I found about peace and you can listen to it. Peace is not man, sorry. Man is not at peace with his fellow man because he's not at peace with himself. I hope you heard that. He is not at peace with himself because he is not at peace with God. So, man is not at peace with his fellow man because he is not at peace with himself. And man is not at peace with God. 